Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Content Versation. I wanted to start this podcast off with a little introduction and a little disclaimer as well. Uh, the disclaimer being this one was kind of off the cuff. I wanted to do this podcast for a while. This first episode was a bit off the cuff. We just decided to do it last minute. And so I was rushing the microphone set up. And as you'll hear, the microphone turned out to not be omnidirectional, which means that Aaron sounds great and I sound like... Like I'm in a cardboard box in a car park about two cities away. So yeah, sorry about that. The uh, the next episodes that are coming will be sounding a lot better. But yeah, I thought I'd just give you a heads up on that one. Basically, the idea behind this podcast is to talk to people in the music industry who are content creators, musicians, videographers, graphic designers, photographers, artists, anything in that field, and just kind of get their ideas and thoughts on content creation, any tips and tricks that they may have picked up along the way, and basically just have a chat about all things content. So yeah, enjoy. Right. This uh, is a professional setup, isn't it? Yeah. Let's... <laughs> Let's figure this one out. Let's then. figure it out. So this is the first episode of Contemptization. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a kind of video podcast, audio podcast, whenever I decide to make one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the idea behind this podcast is basically to talk to people in the music industry, talk to content creators, and basically get their insights and uh, thoughts on content creation. Uh, today we've got Aaron McKenzie, uh, filmmaker, Hello. musician extraordinaire. Extraordinaire, wow. Love that title. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, do you want to introduce yourself and explain who you are and what you do? So yeah, I'm Aaron McKenzie and I feel like I should be, am I looking at the camera or are you? Yeah, I'm just looking Look at you, yeah. staring into your eyes this close, it's not something we do that often. <laughs> um, so you know who I am, but for everyone who doesn't know, I'm Aaron McKenzie, I play bass guitar in the band While She Sleeps. Um, I have done the content within the band for um, many years and because we have taken on this absolutely ginormous project that is Sleep Society. We have got you involved and uh, it's taken a lot of weight off my shoulders and yeah, and it's lovely to have you around. Sometimes it pisses me off. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. So, I mean, do you want to explain kind of how you got started in making content? Yeah. Um, just so I'm not going off in tangents a little bit later, I'll try and give you a little bit of a backstory and go in chronological order of of a little bit of the history of sleeps, I guess, um, when it comes to content. So we had like we had Tom Welsh who came out with us um, from the very beginning, who is Matt Welsh's brother. And he came out on tour. He shot pretty much all our content, all our studio diaries, all our video, uh, like tour video diaries. And he shot basically every music video for free at pretty much cost, like right up until maybe like brainwashed, I think. I don't like, I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't take any any money himself right up until then. Um, so yeah, he helped us out a bunch. And I think we were slightly ahead of the curve without sounding arrogant, like back in the day when like before Instagram started introducing like all the video aspects of it, um, we were uploading regularly to like YouTube and putting out lo loads of tour diaries. Um, you know, we weren't the first band to do it, but within our scene, I didn't see anybody pumping it out as regularly as we were. So um, when it got to the point where, you know, Tom was getting recognized for his work and he now like, he's an amazing cinematographer who works for um, people like Jaguar and fucking Google and just loads of shit. Like he's, he's made so many great videos and adverts for so many massive companies. Um, we had like a little bit of a stopgap uh, for a couple of years when we lost him and we didn't really churn out as, you know, because we didn't really have anybody to bring out with us. We had like the odd occasion when we brought Sam Bailey out with us for um, the brainwash tour. Um, in, you know, he did really well and like I love those videos. But um, yeah, we weren't really documenting stuff as regularly as we used to. Um, so when we were signed to Sony on the Brainwashed album, we got sent out these little action cams each. And I just put mine to good use. I was just like, okay, this is something to to get on with. It's something, you know, to fill my time while um, I'm on tour and stuff. So I just literally started making 
the the shittiest like 15 second videos because that's all like you could do on instagram at the time and i was like every time we went to a festival i'd put together like i'd just take my action cam out and just make like six um 15 second videos and it is just developed from there really and i was kind of adamant at the start that i didn't want to get into this and make it like a full-time thing but it's just the same as anything like as soon as i got into it you just as soon as like you reach the capacity for for that part of the learning you just want to like you just want more do you know what i mean so like once i like reached the capacity with everything that i could do with that little camera i was just like i was looking at youtube videos what everyone else was putting out and I'm like oh well I could make my videos look a little bit better if I got this camera or if I got this or if I did this you know what I mean so that has just been a slow progression up until now and now I um you know I was doing content for the band full time apart from like like the big high-end music videos that Tom still does for us for you know all the videos that don't have a budget um, I try and get creative and and make those um, kind of instant grat. I think they're called like that's the terminology within the music industry. There, the songs that um, don't get the budget and don't get the push, but you still do music videos for them. So I do that, and yeah, and I'm pretty much doing all the content until you arrived, and now you're taking a lot of weight off my shoulders. And because I don't think we, there was no way I could do this all myself. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And I don't, and I think there's, there's been no way you could do it all yourself. Like. I think we're like, you know, we're bouncing off each other a little bit like that and leaning on each other to when someone gets overwhelmed, like, you know, the other person takes a little bit more on. So yeah, it's a good working relationship. And yeah, and literally from then until now, that's that's how it's slowly progressed. And and it's moved on just from just the band as well. Like I do music videos for other bands, um, other businesses, not just in the music industry. Um, like I did a bike advert for Oxygen Bikes a couple of months ago. I did promotional video for factory floor just down there the other um the other month so yeah like the scope is just like you know i'm just i'm going in all areas um just because i love it so much and i just want to create content all the time it's it's weird it's a weird addiction <laughs> <laughs> i mean touching back on when you were saying about how you first started with um well you started with just an action cam basically which is like i that's exactly how i started yeah. as well i started off with a little gopro made some crappy little 15 second to a minute videos, yeah. put them on YouTube and what have you, and uh, Instagram. Um, I mean, it's something that I'm trying to kind of hammer home. And what a lot of people try and hammer home as well is the fact that you don't need this crazy camera and editing setup to get your start in making video. No, you don't. Like, it's, it's mainly kind of like, like, you can figure out your compositions, you can figure out all that kind of stuff, all the techie aside of stuff that doesn't cost anything yeah and that's that's kind of how you learn then eventually like you can upgrade and what have you well I, i'm trying to like push home this fact of you don't need this ridiculous camera you can make do with an action camera yeah def definitely but another thing is that you need to make sure that you post that stuff yeah you absolutely do and you need to just figure out that kind of learning curve as well i, I was uh, for, I, I wouldn't say I was lucky, but like I came up at a time which is only like five five years ago when I first started. But it was pretty lenient back then with, with in terms of like the stuff that you you could put out and in very very quickly when Instagram started bringing it and you know and these other platforms started bringing in um, you know and it started pushing video to the forefront of of those platforms. Uh, you know, content creators and and bands, is particularly in our scene start taking advantage of that very quickly and the the quality of the content did uh, dramatically go up you know and um and i think like you, you see it now like look at like gimbal technology like a few years ago like do you know what i mean like i think the the smallest thing you could get was like was it the ronin uh what, the ronin what? yeah something yeah. like that and it was just like and now you have uh, gimbals for your phones do you know what I mean and that's just a perfectly normal thing yeah. just to have a gimbal for your phone because like everybody is getting into it and and I think it's because the social media platforms pushing it to the forefront everybody's just wanting a piece of the cake so um <clears throat> so yeah like it, it's super accessible and it's super easy to put things out there now and you know like everybody's got 4k like uh camera in their in their pockets you know like everybody's phone pretty much nowadays um, has got 4K video capabilities, and it, it, and it's not and it's not just like the 4K videos. You don't have to worry about that too much. Like you said, like it's just about like honing your craft, pushing like the content out there, and and like now, like I think styles are kind of 
because like cameras and, and technology like wanted to produce the best image possible for so long. Now now we've got there. It's kind of like hairstyles. Things yeah. just start going back. Do you know what I mean? Everything starts reverting back to like now it's cool to get like a really old VHS look or like a Super 8 kind of look. So yeah, I think like you said, the most important thing is just to just to put put yourself out there and like in in at the start it, it won't be very good like fuck me like when I look at some of the stuff that I put out in just like the URE campaign it's, it was very similar to this one um, but I was doing all the all the video content for it but it was literally that was like my second year using a camera and I think I was still using the action cam for some of the like promo stuff that we were shooting in here and all the little adverts I was making and it's it's awful <laughs> do you know what I mean but. I'm grateful that, you know, that I've got a bunch of supportive dudes who allowed me to do that and allowed me to grow. And, uh, yeah, like you will just get better. Yeah. It's just like literally practice is makes perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, no one's shooting for, for perfection, really. Do you know what I mean? It's just about if you enjoy doing what you're doing, like just fucking just do it and just don't really um, just don't. Like, if people criticize your work, then fuck them. Do you know what I mean? Just do it because you love it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as well, like, even if they criticise your work, like, really, I'm quite lucky that I haven't had anyone really criticise my work yet. Yeah, touch wood. But, like, even that kind of thing, like, I mean, I'm, I'm my own worst critic because I'm sure you're your own worst critic. Oh, yeah, every video... Uh, my last video is my worst in my eyes because, like, the, the one that I'm currently working on is, like, I want to make it the best it can possibly yeah. be. And then I'm always, like, looking back, like, even just, like, two or three videos, I'm like, I could have made that better. But that's, that's, like, that's the main thing, though, isn't it? Like, you constantly... you put, As long as you're putting that stuff out there and you're, like, making yourself vulnerable to that, you look with a lot more scrutiny at your past work, which makes you learn even more. So that, like you said, the next video that you do is going to be the next best thing that you've Definitely. Released. And it's this it's this constant internal battle that, like like you said, I think everybody goes through it, or anybody who um, really wants to strive to make themselves better. It's the... There's one, there's one part inside of me that wants to just believe that everything I'm doing right now is the best it will ever be, and I want it just to be like... Um, in this constant like mo do you know what I mean I want it to be like held in this moment where I'm just like everything I do is just going to be the best and I'm, and I'm great right now and then there's the other side of me where I just like you know I just criticize every single thing that I do and so that's why I get this eternal battle but like now I'm just trying to you know listen to the other voice in like in myself just you know like those those voices are a good thing and this and like when you scrutinize yourself that's a good thing because it just means you just want to get better yeah that and that and that's what i try and listen to care about it yeah like that, that's the main thing like if you don't care about it and you're just doing it for money it'll reflect in your work yeah because it'll, it'll just be one dimensional it, it, you know yeah and and i think that just it kind of it, it's a trickle down effect because like you care so much like you care so much about the single video you put out, but like, but that video that comes out, like there's so much work that's gone into it and so much self criticizing that goes into it. Just like, like even when I'm on set and like in the moment, I'm just like thinking, how can I, from start to finish, I'm thinking, how can I make it better? What I would, would like to talk to you about is how you think, like what, why is content so important? Not necessarily just for bands, or artists or whatever, but for like business or whatever you're kind of wanting to advertise, like why is it so important? Then? Well, I think the classic the classic saying is like a picture speaks a thousand words, but I think a video speaks even more. Do you know what I mean? And I think it is I think it's so important to like kind of sell like your business or whatever, like whatever that way. It gives people like a greater insight into who you are and you know like you can add it's multi-dimensional where you you know watching like a, a good advertisement or a good video with you know with like the right music and like you know it can evoke so much emotion out of you and i think you know it's it's almost like emotional manipulation do you know what i mean it's like when you watch like a good film and it's like and you know and the and the dialogue is just it's just really moving and it's got the right score behind it it's just it's just so moving and i think it's just it's just so important just to be able to just to evoke the emotion out of people do you know what i mean it's it's emotional porn basically and like and people people love it do you know what i mean like when you like i, I said this to matt the other day and it was only as a joke but do you know what i mean like when you're what what do you do in the evening with with your partner do you know what i mean you sit and you watch videos you watch motion picture you don't sit down and look at pictures on the tv just being like oh isn't that picture great do you know what i mean it's just it's just so important nowadays and yeah and i th and i think uh statistically like you are 
more likely to be able to like sell a product or, or, or engage in like more people in in whatever it is your business or the music that your band makes or whatever like if you are putting out regular video content because it gives a greater insight into who and what you are yeah definitely uh, that's, that's the main thing is uh, a million people say it all the time but it really is true like it's, it's all about telling the story yeah of what you want to get across yeah like people relate to story. it's all right you can have all these flashy images of you know, the, a new sports car or, you know, perfume, whatever. Mm. But if there's no story behind it that holds any weight or any kind of emotional attachment to it, then people aren't interested, I don't think. Definitely, yeah. It kinda, it's like the, one of the main things that I do with you guys, and it's what I've done since the beginning with working with you guys, is try to, like, show that you're people and you've got, like, you've, you've got personality. So you're trying to play that personality, but also you're telling the story of the day. Like, if we're on tour or whatever, you tell yeah. the story of the day, but you also have to inject, like, the personality into it to create that emotional attachment to these characters. Definitely, yeah. Like, and that's the thing that we've tried to sell ourselves on, you know. We've got... We are five personalities, and it's almost like a reality TV show most of the time. And I yeah. think that's why they do so well, because you're, like, you're watching these people's lives, and I, and I, and I don't know what it is that's so engaging about that, but... Yeah, that's the thing that we've we've tried to sell, that we are just people. There's no, like, smoke and mirrors with it. But, yeah, like, but definitely, like, story is the most important thing. Uh, you can, you know, you can put out a video that has, like, beautiful imagery, but, like, if people aren't really going to be engaged with it. Do you know what I mean? If it's not really going anywhere, like, you, you, even if it's, like, beautiful cinematic drone shots of, like, the mountains and blah, 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 and all this, but, like, if it's not, if it's not really going anywhere, it's not interesting, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's... That's the important thing as well. Like, and that, and I think people like this kind of relates back to what we were talking about before, like about people just putting out their videos and just going for it and just putting themselves out on display. Um, like, you can really get caught up with the quality of of the video. Do you know what I mean? And and trying to make it as look as good as you can. But I think so many people get tunnel vision for that, and then they completely um, they abandon the story vibe of it. And that, and I think that is that is the most important thing. And that's why I think it's. The quality of the video comes after the story. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, like you were saying before, again, about, like, using your phone. Like, you, you've always got a camera in your pocket, like a 4K camera. Yeah. I, I made a, uh, a music video for Behemoth, like yeah, a live yeah. music video for Behemoth. Half of that was shot on an iPhone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, it's and you got, put the got, Super 8 kind of overlay on yeah, it. Yeah, and it's got hundreds of thousands of views. It's like, you, you really don't have any excuse nowadays to, no. if, you, if you're wanting to do it, and this is a conversation that I keep having with several people at the moment, is that if you're wanting to do something, but it's not happening, you're the only person stopping that from happening. Definitely, Because you're yeah. just not doing it. You're not posting it. Like, you, you might be making these videos or whatever, but you might be too scared about what people might think. And again, this is something I said to you guys the other day. It's like, people don't really care. Yeah, they don't. They don't. And like, and even if somebody does like critique your work, it's just going to be a moment for them. Yeah. And, it, and it is hard. Like you, but sometimes you've just got to take it on the chin. If somebody like, and I don't think it's many times it happens. You know what I mean? Like it, it'll probably happen like on the bigger platforms. Like if we're posting something on sleeps and, and people feel like they can hide in thousands of comments, you know what I mean? And, and you've just got to take them with a pinch of salt and just let people do what they do. It's just, it's always going to be a thing. Um, but I, yeah, I think it, it is hard. It's hard, like, because like I still suffer from it a little bit. I, like, I suffer from imposter syndrome and like a lot of the times, like I'm on like a music video set and I'm in charge of everything and I'm just like, um, when are they going to figure out that you're not supposed to be in charge? Do you know what I mean? And and, yeah. and in the beginning, like you really do have to battle and get through that because I, I don't know, I don't know many people who don't have it. Like I, I heard Joe Rogan like speak about it on his podcast and he said he still gets it and he's like, he's like the most famous podcaster in the world. Do you know what I mean? So like, I think everybody will suffer with it. And at the start, it is, it is a real challenge because at the start, you kind of don't have anything to, to, to back yourself up because like now, although I still get it, I... I know that I've got confidence in my work that I know what I'm doing yeah. and that, um, you know, I'll get the the right results that I want because I know what I'm looking for now. Whereas before, like sometimes I like, I'd, I'd get on a shoe, I'd suffer with it, but you know, get, get on with it and think that I'm getting like loads of great stuff and then get back to the computer. And then I'm like, I'm, and I'm like really hating what I shot and I'm just like, fuck's sake. But you've, you've got to go through those. Like yeah. you've got, you've got, to, you've got to take the blows. Like you, they're just going to happen. You're not going to, 
the, like the, it's, that's the road of life. Nothing's going to happen perfectly. Yeah. But if you want some form of success, you've got to go through those bumpy roads because yeah. otherwise you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, you've got, you've got to put yourself on the line. You can't expect things to happen and just fall on your lap. Like you've got to work for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so well, let's talk about uh, like social media platforms because I found that where you put your content is kind of almost as important as the content itself sometimes. Definitely like, is, Because yeah. if you've you wanted to sell the story, if no one's going to see it, then it's pointless. Yes. Like, I, I found that Instagram is like the thing. Like that is the thing that's worked best for me. I've got so much work through Instagram. Facebook for me at least, or what I've seen is dying a death. Yeah, I mean, Facebook now is a capitalist monster, Yeah, if you ask me. And, and it's shit because you can set up like a bit your own business page on, on Facebook and you can rake in a load, like a load of likes and, and that's great. But you can put, you, you know, you post to that page and a f- fraction of those people will see it unless you pay f- for the advertisement, yeah. which is shit, really. Like, nobody really wants that. I mean... I know Facebook owns Instagram now, but it seems to, like, the numbers seem to do a lot better to me. Um, and, yeah, and it, there's loads of aspects to, to Instagram now. Like, you've got, you've even got reels. And, and, and uh, you know, I know that Instagram are fucking taking all these aspects from from other from other apps. Like, like the stories, like, came from fucking Snapchat. And I know, um, but, you know, it's a doggy dog world out there. And, like, Instagram seemed to be, like, stealing all these components of, of other apps and making it work for them um and it's almost like instagram is almost like a, a band's or anybody's website now do you know what i mean yeah. like that's where you know that's where look like everybody goes to look for information and that's all that's the at the forefront of our minds as well when we're creating content we're figuring out like you know it's all about posting on instagram first because you like i said you've got the story component to it which is which is amazing um and sometimes they do a lot better than the the actual main post that you put out and now you've got instagram tv where you can um upload like an hour's worth of worth of footage or like you know you can put video up there that's that's an hour long and um, and now you've got reels and and I think it, it's amazing to have all that diversity on one platform because yeah. it means like you can, your creativity is endless when and, and it keeps people engaged they don't want to be seeing the same thing all the time they want to be able to look at look for things in different areas so I think that's for me Instagram is the best place to upload yeah I mean like if anybody's if anybody ever asks me where they can see my work or if they're interested with working with, uh, working with me I do, it's like I do have business cards because it was just I'm like I'm a graphic designer. I've got so I've got some, and I think I've had handed two out in yeah in the entire like, time. It's, it's just something that's drilled into you, like like I said, especially because like my background as a designer, like I've I've designed countless business cards, so it's just drilled into me. It's like you've got to have a business card, but now I use my Instagram as my business card. Definitely, my my Instagram's on my business card and all that stuff, but yeah. I, I I don't know. I still like them because like, and I still carry them around with me because. If you're in that like situation where like you, you get in a quick conversation with somebody and it's a potential client or whatever, um, you know you don't want to be like going through your phone like oh you know tag me in tag, do you know what I mean and yeah. doing all that f- finicky shit. You just want to be like all my info is on there, bro. Like uh, just check it out when, at your own pace. I'll see you later. Do you know what I mean? Although I've done that twice <laughs> in like the two years that I've had. <laughs> but um, yeah, I still I, th- I think they're all right. Yeah, I mean it's it's a great. Uh... Like I, I like the idea of a business kind of thing. Yeah, I like the idea of it probably more but than I just know that he's, especially for our type of work, it's just pointless. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, talking about like platforms still, um, YouTube, mm-hmm. I think um, it's it's just been amazing from from you know the get go, and that's where we used to upload everything. And then when all these social media platforms started growing a little bit and started introducing like the video elements to it, um, you know we we started like neglecting it a little bit but like i think you know look at how many people are growing their channels on on youtube and it's and, and unlike facebook like if you that gain a load of subscribers to youtube and you put out a video that no, that notification that notification will be pushed out to everybody who is following you do you know what i mean and and, uh, and i think um, because youtube is so massive in the video world i think it's the second largest search engine um, in the world yeah. on on the internet, so um, and you know they put, they probably get all their money through advertisements on the videos themselves rather than having to make people pay for their subscribers to see the video in the first place. So um, yeah, it's amazing, and and I think it's it's becoming more and more 
relevant although i think it, for us personally we dipped out on it for a little bit but it's becoming more and more relevant and they've, there's even story elements to youtube now on the on the actual app so um yeah i think i think it's amazing i think it's a, a really honest way to um to grow your channel and your and your business oh yeah definitely it's um I mean, there, there was a time when people were complaining nonstop about YouTube because they changed all these things and what have you. But I've noticed now that's that's not necessarily the case anymore. Like people are starting to back it again. People are like mm. seeing YouTube's phrases again. Like I mean, this this will be going up on YouTube. I've recently started it. This you know, it's a, it's a slow thing, but I've not had time to put the proper work in yet. I think yeah. I've only got like three videos up there, so yeah, yeah. But I'm working on it. But it's yeah, it's I mean, getting your work in more places than just one as well is definitely worth doing because it's just trying to be as many places you can. Definitely, yeah. And I mean, if you're a business as well, I mean, it's same for the band, uh, same for bands as well. Like all these different platforms are kind of like having different kind of PR agents employed. Mm. So like each one's like a different person under your employment that just works 24 7 for yeah free. yeah yeah absolutely yeah um yeah i agree <laughs> <laughs> yeah nice one nice one <laughs> <laughs> um okay so going back to kind of when we were talking about like the whole business card thing and like talking to people and getting the word out uh, about yourself and uh, your work yeah networking i swear by networking is by being a content creator this isn't for bands anymore or whatever but like being an actual content creator looking for work yeah for me networking is the number one thing because word of mouth is everything it is yeah definitely uh, i've had a little bit of a different approach because um it's always been a bit of a sad hustle for me so um you know, like I, I have gained like uh, clients and, and customers through them just see my work online and, and through my website. I usually like when I put like a reel together and I advertise that and I usually like put a bit of money behind it on Facebook as well. Like Facebook is really good. Um, the advertising, advertisement element of it is really good if you're willing to put the money behind it because you can really specify the demographics. Do you know what I mean? So like that that's that's good for that. And it seems like every time I put like a show reel out and put some money behind it, I usually get um, a lot of traffic on my website and then a lot of a lot of emails coming in for people wanting work that way. But um, yeah, I mean, like I, I, I mean, I guess I do network in terms of like, like I'm, I'm out on tour pretty much constantly, and and I've and I've I've grew like a, a network of, of friendships in bands that like you know like some bands that I looked up to before I even got in the music industry. Um, so I get like, you know, I've, I've worked it, I've worked it up that way. Um, but I mean, it's different for you though, isn't it? Because like you're networking to try and to well, try and build your business in like for, first and foremost, to, so you can get more work this, so you can continue doing what you love. This is kind of something that I'm actually going to be making a, like an entire video on in itself with networking. When I'm networking, I'm not actually going in with business in mind. Mm. because I'm not like I think if money's your main prerogative you're not going to create a lasting relationship oh yeah definitely I agree so like I like genuinely when I talk to people about my work or whatever I, I well usually I don't start with my work yeah usually I'm just like oh how are you doing like introduce myself or whatever talking to just being a human people. being really. yeah just be a human being like you don't have to be this corporate kind of Hello, here's my business card. This is what I do. This is what I can give you. This Definitely, is what I yeah. Can give you, give me your money. Definitely, yeah. But I think that's the you want to create. You, you do want to create those friendships because, like, it, it plays on my mind sometimes. I'm like, how, like, if I was to like dip out of like the band and like the video world, like, if I was just, you know what I mean? If yeah. if I was to step away from it, how many friends would I retain? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and and it does play on your mind a lot of the times. Like, is this person just friends with me because they want something out of me? Yeah. Do you Definitely. know what I mean? And so that's like that's the complete wrong way to go. Not only in business, but in life, anyway. It is. Like, yeah. You can't expect things from people. You can't like, know. It's, it's but that's just... that's the way the the economy, though, isn't it? And, I, and and me and my wife were talking about this. Like, look how many billionaires there is in the world. Do you know what I mean? Like, and f think like how easily they could solve a lot of the world's issues just by just donating like some some of their fucking wealth. Do you know what I mean? But like, I don't think you get. I don't think you get to that position by being a reasonable person. Oh, Do you know no. what I mean? I like the when, same conversation the other day with my mum. When you <laughs> get, if you're, if you're so cutthroat to become a billionaire and to hoard all this wealth, yeah. then you're not the type of person who's going to like 
donate to charities a lot of the times. And, you know, I'm not speaking for everybody, um, but like typically, like if you're, if you're so cutthroat that you become a billionaire, then fuck me. Like you've probably fucked a lot of people over. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, yeah, and that's, that's like the main thing is like with, with networking, don't go in there with this business mind. Just go in there. Just be a person. Like, whenever I say networking, I mean, I've I've managed to come across most, if not all, of my opportunities through friendships. Yeah, like definitely. through genuine friendships. I mean, this well. is why you work for us. Yes, exactly. It's like, and like working with the, the guys at Five B as well. Like when I went out on that first behemoth shoot with you. Yeah, I, we we were just having a laugh with them. We we're just talking with them. There was no ulterior motive. There was nothing like, oh, I want more work out of you. We were just like being sound dudes, just going out there and just doing the job. Yeah, I mean, like, because my main priority is not to like, you know, it's pointless in trying to plan ahead and trying trying to be like, oh, I want, I'm trying to be nice so I can get more work out of you guys. My main priority is to create the best possible. Uh, piece of, I mean, I guess like, you know, video is a piece of art, I yeah. guess, you know, that's what my main priority is making that my work as best as it can be. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. And that's, and that, cause it's my, it's my passion. That's what I want to do. I want to be, I want to, I, I want to climb the ladder of not success, but I want to climb my own personal ladder of just getting better at my craft. Yeah. That's, that's all. That's my, that's my main focus. And that's all I want to do. And I mean, like even saying success, like, it's, it's not a bad word to say because you can have your own personal ideas of success that you don't have to mean monetary gain or anything like that. Like, I've got a completely different idea of success to me, what, what could be to the next person. Yeah, sure. But it's, it's, uh, it's definitely something to aspire to do. Definitely. Um, yeah. Dead air. <laughs> Dead air. Are you going to leave this stuff in? I don't know. I might do. <laughs> See how it sounds. Do it. Yeah. See how it sounds. I've I've never really got along with that one. See how it sounds. You need to hear how it sounds. You know what I mean? Oh, you need to see. Well, you need to see what it looks like. It's the beauty of video. Yeah. Um. Um. Let me look at my past notes. <laughs> yeah, I've this, got. I've this got is one. The first attempt. I, yeah. <laughs> well, we tried this for anybody listening and watching, or just listening or just watching. I mean, are you going to subtitle this? I don't know. Just see, how, <laughs> see how it sounds. See how it sounds. <laughs> Um, yeah, we attempted this at the height of the first lockdown and we did it over over Zoom. Or what, what did we use? What platform? Uh, whereby. Whereby, yeah. And um, yeah, we just thought we'd just do it like this instead because it's a lot better. So the Sleep Society, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. What is it? So the Sleep Society is an alternative music industry model. Um, it's hosted on Patreon and it's basically a subscription-based platform and anybody who cares about the band can uh, donate money to us um, in exchange for different perks. We've got four different tiers ranging from a coffee, the price of a coffee, all the way to like the price of like a hoodie. And um, basically like COVID-19 was a massive like kick in the knackers for everybody in the music industry, uh, especially in the sector that we're in, in like the alternative music kind of uh, genre. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's just really hard at the minute because obviously uh, the band and the music industry relies on mass gatherings of people. Um, it's like the main source of income. So, and obviously that has been banned for the time being, um, like globally. So yeah, we had to, we, I mean, we've, we've had this idea for a little bit. Um, when we stuck, when we did the URWE, which was a crowdfunded campaign, um, you know, yeah, that was held on, uh, pledge music platform which i don't think is around anymore i think that um i think that liquidized but um but it was that was a great way to like um just basically get our fans involved and we've always kind of been um we've we're like quite close knit with our fans and we've all you know because we're northern lads you know what i mean and there's like no smoke and mirrors with us we're just like we understand that we're just fucking we're just the same as anybody we're still the fans watching our favorite bands do you know what i mean like we don't want to create that like barrier between us and our fans and um yeah and we just want to make it this we wanted to create this community where everybody could feel like they're involved and yeah and that and you are we compliant com <clears throat> you are we completely blew our minds <laughs> completely <laughs> Yeah, you know, we completely blew our minds. Yeah, I mean, it did. Like, so many people got involved, and that album existed because people, um, you know, 
uh, people backed it and that was amazing and you know that started like the wheels turning in our heads for like maybe we can make this more sustainable if we just you know if everybody who cared about the band uh, we could turn that into like a monthly thing instead of just like a, a one-time al- album funding thing so it, and it's you know it, it it just coincided so well. It was like it's it's literally the silver lining to this horrifically shit situation in COVID nineteen. Like, um, yeah, I it, I don't know how we would survive without it. So anybody who is a part of the Sleep Society is literally keeping this band alive, quite literally. And you know, and if and if nobody is like a part of it, if they haven't signed up and they can't afford it, like absolutely that's like that's no bother to us. Like we we want to treat everybody the same, obviously because people are. Um, are like donating their money towards us in the sleep society we do have to give them extra perks and extra content but we don't want to that's the thing that we're trying to achieve at the minute and try and find that balance where we don't want to neglect anybody who can't sign up we don't want to do that we don't want to completely abandon like our our main fan base because that's what we're all about so um, yeah at the minute we're just trying to find that balance where everybody still gets a good piece of the pie yep. but we're trying to just give people in the society just those extra little perks because they're you know they're keeping the band alive yeah that's um that's the kind of juggling that that we well both of us and well the rest of the guys as well like we're all kind of trying to juggle with what to put into the society to make sure that there's the value there which there's i think we're doing a really good job of it so far yeah definitely like, there's so much insane content out there and also, like, me and you have been coming up with new ideas for different videos and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so, and there's a lot more really cool stuff to come that we've already got ready, what we've got planned. Uh, but we're also trying to juggle that with the fact of, you know, we're, we're giving also the content to the public. Definitely. Well, I think we're trying to find that balance because we're trying to, you know, bef- before... It, it launched you know you have this idea of how it's going to go in your head and then but like the reality of it is so much different like I think giving people all the behind the scenes um to the public I think that's really important because I think everybody n- needs to feel connected with this album process not just the people in the society everybody needs to feel like they're a part of it and that's why we're giving it I mean complete transparency is what we're always trying to aim for do you know what I mean we're not trying to like say one thing and then do another like we you know we'll give people in the society um we'll give them those videos early do you know what i mean so they get early access they get to see it before everybody else but everybody does need to see everybody needs to see the process and what's been going on we don't want to just completely because that's what we've always been about so we don't want to just turn up with like the sleep society and then just start neglecting everybody else you know that's not the way we should do it but i think the things like all the tutorials and all the like the run-throughs and stuff i think that's where the society gets the main perks because we want to get all of our knowledge that we've acquired throughout the years and all our personal skill sets and then try and like pass it down to people who like really want to do this as well and it's not just people who want to be like in the music industry like the way that I'm trying to craft my tutorial series is um is trying to just make it broad and available for any, anybody so like even though I am talking about some specific situations w- where it's related to being a content creator in a band you can just take that with a pinch of salt and adapt it to whatever situation you find yourself in so um yeah like it, it's a nice opportunity it's like to it's, it's nice to be able to like pass down knowledge and it's not to say that like I'm this almighty person who knows fucking everything i still have so much to learn i still find myself on youtube tutorials every single night do you know what i mean yeah. just trying to develop my skills but there's a lot of people like i spent so much of my time sometimes just wasting hours on the wrong uh tutorials that i didn't do you know what i mean like like i i literally like clambered my way through this like to, to try and find out this knowledge that that i needed to acquire to get my skill to develop on my skill set but so i'm trying to like um I'm trying to like sharpen the learning curve for people. I'm trying to like cut out all that nonsense and speed it up, speed it up and just give people what they what they need to know at the very beginning. Yeah. And we've only shot two episodes at the minute, but um yeah, I'm looking forward just to developing that and and uh and yeah, and making I mean, it more. With the plans that we've got for the society what's going into it tutorial wise and just general knowledge based stuff like not only yourself with um, with your like content creator series, your filmmaking series, but I think I thought creatives in general like is a really good subscription because we, like 
we've got Matt and South who are doing design tutorials and that kind of thing as well. So like just from a creative standpoint, like there's going to be a lot, like a wealth of knowledge yeah. in, in just in that account there. Definitely, yeah. Like, the, and, you know, I, I'm still kind of like blown away with like the amount of stuff, like how, how diverse like our skill sets are as, as people because like I, I'll still like pull Matt or Sav to the side and just like ask for help on like Photoshop stuff. Like I think Photoshop's really important. Many people won't think it is, but for like a uh, visual content creator, like um, like for videos, it is important if you want to like create titles and stuff uh, or like make the titles a bit more elaborate or just put any graphics on it. Um, so like, yeah, I still pull them to the side and like, so, like and a lot of the times like, sh you know, Sean, uh, smartened up all the audio bed for like the e-commerce like and he's always doing st stuff like that like if if i've got the, vid the the video finished and i've got like this completely uh complex audio bed and i'm just like in in it's in it's you know he's got a better ear than me and he can make it sound better so like yeah like we we, we kind of like fill the gaps for each other where you know like we'll, somebody always knows something more than the other person in those areas but as a unit like we know everything so like I say everything. That sounds a bit. <laughs> we know a lot. Yeah. As a combined unit, do you know what I mean? So I mean, that as well, what you were just saying about Sean, the audio side of things. Like I've actually been picking his brains a lot recently about audio because it's only become really apparent whilst doing the uh, content for the society that audio is so important. Yes. Like, way more important than what I originally thought. Because I was kind of just like before I was like. Oh, let's get this mic on there, right? Okay, I can hear it. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. It's like now I'm learning the EQing, what compression does, like limiting all these different sorts of things, making sure all the levels are in the right places. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so ridiculously important. And it's, at least I feel as though it's like bringing, not visually, but like the actual overall quality of the videos, it's bringing that up massively from the bottom up. Like, Definitely. Like just lifting it all up. So Definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's massively important. And I used to neglect it a little bit at the start, but now, like, if I'm creating just just whatever it is, just whatever it is, like, like I used to, I used to just very much just like put a video together, put all my clips together, and if it was like a travel video or just whatever it was that didn't require any like raw sounds from the situation, I always just used to put the video, uh, the audio underneath it, whatever song I wanted to use, and that was it. But n now, like for every little like once I've gone through and, and cut my video, I'll take just as long now developing the, the sound bed, you know, and like looking for like every little piece in the video where I could add a sound because it just, it creates so, so much more of a engaging, not just engaging, but it's just so immersive. You, you know, you get invested in it because you like, you feel like you're there. Yeah, definitely. So, so it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely become more apparent recently that audio is that important to like. Yeah, so I'll literally take as long as, as quitting the video now or developing the audio. Like with the e-commerce video, um, the what is the Sleep Society, I think. Well, e-commerce was the is the inside title, um, but which maybe you can link in the description below yeah. so people can f uh, see what Sleep Society is. But yeah, like if you if you watch that video, if you try and take note of like, the audio bed i like spent so long like if if there was like a shot of like like in a car i would put like the inside noise of a car in there and do you know what i mean like or like the like a train i would put like the, the noise of a train or like ambient noise of a room and although it's got like the main score underneath it i've like developed like up the whole way through it like if, even if it was just like uh, us playing at a show i put like crowd noises in there with maybe like some guitar noises uh, and it may not like, it won't be like the audio from that show because like the audio that I had is like from like the camera mic probably and it's and it's probably blown out. So I couldn't use that. So I had to develop it myself. So if you like watch it and like, and take notes of all the audio, like clips that I've got in, it's, yeah. Like I did it for pretty much every clip in there. Yeah. And it's so, and it's so much more of a plea. Like if I took, if I muted it all and you just had the dialogue and just the, the score, it's, it, it's just not as interesting. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's not as interesting to watch, that's and that's that how it is. Extra dimension, isn't it? it is that extra dimension, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Well, I think we'll wrap it up here. Yeah. Um, I, if you want to check out the society, go to sleepsociety.com or patreon.com forward slash while she sleeps. Yeah. Uh, if they want to find yourself and your work. 
Um, I'm at Aaron WSS. That's double A R A N W S S. Um, that is on Instagram. And if you want to find me on YouTube, it's Aaron WSS one. Never really changed the name of that, but um, that is that is my main YouTube uh, content page that uh, I started putting stuff on at the beginning of lockdown and then got really busy with the Sleep Society stuff. I think you, you were in the same situation. Um, but yeah, I do I do plan to upload some stuff on there, um, you know, whether it's just some more behind the scenes of like a music video that, that I'm doing or like I'm... I, I do plan on releasing uh, next year, the start of next year. I'm going to do pretty much like a new advert for myself um, with all the work that I've done this year because I've not really showcased it properly. And I'm probably going to like make some like look packs and stuff to uh, to go out with that. So yeah, look out for that. I'll probably be posting that. Well, I will be posting that on my main YouTube page and across all my social media platforms as well. And uh, also on Facebook, it's Aaron McKenzie Films. So yeah. Okay, cheers for talking today. Yeah, nice one, dude. Nice one. Ladies. Peace.